Well, hello, friends. Welcome to One Stop Current Affairs. Uh, today, we are going to talk about uh, the dastardly attack which took place in Sukma district of Chhattisgarh on the security personals uh, by the Naxals. Uh, so, we are going to talk about this story and. Uh, uh, what and we are also going to touch upon what is Naxalism and why it started, where it originated, and uh, uh, how far its wings have been spread, and uh, and what are the things which the government of India has done to curb it. So we're going to talk about everything in each thing in detail uh, here. So uh, let's start with our first uh, presentation. So. Uh, We'll start with the Nexel attack which took place. So, uh, 22 uh, security personnel uh, martyred in this uh, attack. Uh, uh, they are not only from the CRPF, they are also from uh, uh, from many other uh, many other paramilitary organizations. So, uh, they were uh, from Bastaria, uh, there were some Cobra commandos also which were part of this uh, a party which was uh, doing a recce and which was uh, doing a look, uh, search operation in the area uh, and uh, you know 31 person have been injured in this attack so uh, this is something which is uh, very very disturbing that not only 22 have been killed but 31 have been injured in the attack and one paramilitary commando is still missing so these are the details which we have got so far and like the intensity of the attack can only be figured out with this thing that nearly 400 Maoists ambushed the security personnel. So you can imagine that how the Maoists attacked the entire uh, paramilitary, the, the entire security uh, party which was there in the area. And uh, let's go. The, about the details. So this attack basically took here in the Sukma district. This is the Sukma district. Uh, it took somewhere here near the border with Bijapur. Uh, so this is very important for everyone to understand. This is basically part of the red corridor, uh, the Naxal belt, which we uh, all of us we, as we know. Now, uh, what happened in Sukma basically? What exactly happened? How the things unfolded? Uh, on 3rd of April, that is 48 hours from today, how the things unfolded and we're going to just look at the details here. On April 2, security personnel received input about Maoist team headed uh, by Madhavi, Madhvi Hidma. So he is a, a Maoist uh, insurgent. He has been uh, operating for a very long time. He is nearly 40 year old Maoist insurgent. Uh, year old Maoist uh, who has been operational in these areas. Uh, we'll talk about him also in detail. Uh, nearly the, the, the combing operation was launched by the paramilitary, central paramilitary personnel started combing operation on receiving the intelligent input. So basically what happened exactly, there was a, a construction of a road which was taking place. And as a lot of people know that in the past the Maoists have uh, demol destroyed and demolished the uh, the road construction activities or any infrastructure activities which has taken place in the past in these areas. So uh, the security forces received an input that uh, there was another attack and an another attack is being planned by the uh, Maoists and uh, they received the input and they started moving, uh, they started searching the entire area and some 1700 paramilitary persons were deployed for this job. Uh, MHA claims the Maoists were trying to disrupt the construction of road near Silgar and Jagargunda. So this is the this is the uh, path where the entire uh, incident actually took place. This is the road for which uh, Maoists were, were, were presumably coming for. On April 3, uh, the search party, this search party was looking around uh, in Tiram forest when the gunfight broke and nearly 400 Maoists uh, attacked them. They uh, ambushed them from two sides and they surround, uh, they trapped them in a corner and it became impossible, almost impossible for the security personnel to break through from this trap. 
So, uh, so Mao is surrounded security personnel from two sides. The gunfight lasted nearly three hours. Uh, officials haven't denied possibility of Maoist laying a trap. So basically, as I've told you about uh, uh, Madhvi uh, Hidma, the, the mastermind behind, as officials have stated, that he is the mastermind behind this attack. He was the person who basically, uh, officials are not denying that he might have laid this trap because he is known for uh, uh, such uh, lethal ambush attacks in the past also. Uh, Maoist Madhvi Hidma is believed to be mastermind of the attack. Now, who is Madhvi Hidma? We have this very old photograph of his. Uh, we, the, you know, even the intelligence agencies do not have any latest photographs. So this is the old photograph which we have, which is circulating on uh, newspapers, in newspapers and everywhere. So he is he heads the Maoist group People's Liberation Guerrilla Battalion Number One. Uh, known for lethal ambushes, leads pack of 180 to 250 Maoist fighters and has 40 lakh rupee uh, reward over his head. Considered to be mastermind behind killing of 32 Congress leaders in Jiram Valley ambush in 2013. Not only this, he was also uh, considered to be responsible for the 2017 attack on the CRPF personnel in which 25 Javans were also killed. So uh, he is a very, uh, very dangerous man. Uh, and he has been very active in this in this entire region. So, what is Naxalism? Where the where did this word come from? And what are the connotations? And what are the reasons behind this uh, uprising in the central part of India? So, the origin basically started from here. Uh, the the Jalpaiguri, this district. There is somewhere here. We have this uh, Naxalbadi village. So in 1967, what happens? Uh, there is a there is a farmer who uh, wins a case uh, against a landlord, but uh, over uh, distribution of uh, the, the, the 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 distribution of the produce, but the landlord and his men beat the farmer, and in retaliation, the uh, a rebellion a rebellion takes place, and the local landlord and his uh, men were uh, in retaliation they were beaten they were brutalized by these uh, peasants uh, so objective of the re rebellion was the rightful redistribution of the land to working peasants so the main objective was to uh, give uh, redistribution means redistribute the lands to the peasants who are at peasants who are actually working on these par on these lands not the landlords who are just sitting idly and uh, doing nothing and just giving orders and so uh, you all must be familiar about the zamindari system uh, how it was abolished in 1952 post sorry 1952 post independence but there were large chunks of land which were still owned by many local landlords and they used to uh, rule uh, these uh, these areas and they used to like exploit these peasants and it became almost impossible for these peasants to have a livelihood uh next rebellion was under the leadership of charu majumdar kanu santhal and jagan sanyal so these were the leaders of this naxal movement uh, charu majumdar kanu santhal and jagan sanyal now you can see in the background we have this photograph of mao zedong uh, the the first uh, the, the Chinese premier, the ch first president of the ch uh, China, he uh, was a lot of inspiration behind this Naxal movement. How we'll tell you later. Uh, now, uh, Naxalism is basically considered to be far left radical communist. It is a movement started uh, by these far left radical communists. Uh, Charu Majandar was inspired by doctrine of Mao Zedong. So what was the doctrine which he was inspired by? Say, they believed Charu Majundar held government and upper class responsible for the plight of peasants and lower class tribals. So Majundar believed that these uh, peasants and uh, peasants and lower class tribals should take up arms against the government and upper class people, and uh, they should remove them. 
Uh, after death of Chadu Mazumdar, Nexu movement was fragmented into many competing factions. It was, as you can see, there are a lot of uh, uh, a lot of political organizations with different names. There is a CPIM, Communist Party of India Marxist. There is a CPIM uh, L Marxist Leninist. There is a CPI. So the, there are several organizations, several, many, many left organizations in the country right now. So after Charu Majamdar's death in 1972, 1972, this movement was actually fragmented into a lot of pieces. So now let's see the states which are worst and partially hit by uh, Naxalism because over the course of years, the situation in this past decade has improved a lot. Uh, there were many reports that in this uh, entire corridor, as you can see here, from here till here, this entire corridor was affected in the last decade, in the past decade, in from 2000 and 2009. A lot of people used to say that a lot of reports were there that there were nearly 20,000 armed rebellions because... Uh, of different reasons of course uh, as you can see these Bihar, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh these are mineral rich states so what used to happen basically government in these uh, uh, from early 2000 and 2010 in, these period, in this period government gave a lot of tender to private organizations and a lot of people were very unhappy uh, with this part because a lot of tribals they, their lands were snatched uh, they were not uh, given, uh, they were not asked before these things and you can understand they were culturally, socially associated with these lands and they were not feeling, uh, they were not feeling like giving up these lands to the big corporates uh, but it was a government of India decision and ultimately uh, uh, these tribals, all these people were removed from their part of the land which uh, resulted in uh, an armed rebellion a rep uh, there is a report which states that nearly 20,000 um, uh, Naxals, armed Naxals were uh, there from 2000 uh, to 2010. This was a very dangerous period when this rebellion was at its peak. Uh, you remember that Dantewada incident which took place in 2010 in which uh, nearly 75 CRPF personnel were ambushed and uh, attacked as, as CRPF personnel were ambushed and killed uh, in Dantewada. So that was, I think, one of the most brutal uh, 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 the incidents in uh, Maoist uh, insurgency. Now let's come to the in, uh, worst hit states. Uh, worst state states are Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. So these are the states these are the bordering states which are Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. These are the three, four states which are the worst hit states. And if you can see, that so there is a pattern. The maximum number of uh, Maoist attack actually take place in Chhattisgarh, uh, largely in Sukma or in Dantewada or in Bijapur. These are the district, these are the bordering areas. So what happens largely because these are large piece of uh, these are large forest lands. What these Maoists do that they move uh, sporadically from one state to another state, and these are the bordering areas. So what they do after uh, ambushing or uh, leading an attack over a, a paramilitary force, they move to another state and they uh, they go into hiding for a very long time, and they again wait for an opportune time to again hit back. Now, the partially hit states uh, are UP, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, West Bengal. These states, UP, Odisha, uh, Madhya Pradesh and West Bengal, the state from where the entire Naxalism started, are now partially hit. Now, we would like to tell that there are several uh, interstate agreements signed between a lot of states like Uttar Pradesh has signed the interstate agreement with Bihar and Jharkhand. Uh, they have uh, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh have also a lot of agreements over uh, intelligence sharing uh, about Naxal movements and everything. Uh, 
now this these things are important to know because uh, it is it, it is very important that the naturalism which was at its peak during this period is now it's now reduced to a lot of uh, it now reduced to a lot of levels uh, even the home minister today in its uh, uh, in his statement said that uh, we will take this fight to its culmination and if, uh, the chief minister of chatisgarh bhupesh baghel also said that uh, it is breathing its last uh, but it's a long road ahead and uh, let's hope uh, things go smoothly as being planned this is rahul pandey for one stop current affairs you can uh, please go subscribe our channel for all the current affairs updates we will keep coming back to you with the daily news analysis and also with these shows uh, to uh, enhance your skills enhance your knowledge uh, rahul pandey for one stop current affairs thank you so much